The final part of a quantity that uh, we're going to study is uncertainty. The reason we need to talk about uncertainty is that no measurement is 100% accurate. It is not possible. In the high school classroom, we're only going to use pretty primitive tools, um, rulers, microscope, maybe, um, thermometers. Um, probably won't use anything with lasers or computers. But even if we had some fancy uh, equipment, even they can't measure something 100% precisely. There's always limits. So most of the values that were given, they imply a range of possible values. Now, there are many different ways to do this. Um, the simplest is to simply state it exactly, explicitly. Uh, for instance, maybe I know that this particular length is between 1.3 and 1.4 centimeters, but I don't know it any more precisely than that. A different way that uh, you can measure something, and this is pretty popular in the engineering field, is to give a best estimate. That is my best guess at what it is. Uh, but then also to provide what's called an error or an uncertainty uh, or a limit on either side, a plus or minus value, uh, some wiggle room, you could call it. Um, and so that same measurement that we said before was 1.3 to 1.4 centimeters. Perhaps it would be best if we describe that as 1.35 plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeters. That means I have a guess, and uh, I'm willing to go um, 5 hundredths of a centimeter above or below that. The final way of describing a uh, range of values is to use significant digits. Significant digits is the tool that our book uses. When using significant digits, the precision of your measurement is implied by how many digits were given to you. Specifically, the second to last digit kind of sets up the range. And the last digit is our best guess, an estimate. So let's look at a couple specific examples of this. Uh, if we were measuring this cylinder with this specific ruler, this ruler is not very precise. Uh, it only goes down to centimeters. And so if I look here, I can say with confidence that this centimeter is between 12 and 13 centimeters. And so I would say it's one, two, point. And I'm allowed to estimate one digit. Personally, I would say 12.7, but my lab partner might say 12.8 uh, or maybe 12.6. And if I came back a week from now, I probably would say something uh, a little different, too. So that last digit of the seventh is really an estimate. Now I'm going to measure uh, a similar object, but with a slightly more precise ruler. And notice that the object itself is a little bit more sharply defined. It doesn't have that rounded edge that the last object had. So I think I can measure this with a little bit more precision. Uh, I can certainly say that it's between 9 centimeters and 10 centimeters. But I can, I can say with more confidence today that it's between 9.6 and 9.7 centimeters. So I'm going to for sure write 9.6. And I'm allowed to estimate one value, one digit. And I would say that it's slightly more than halfway. So I'm going to say 9.67 centimeters. Of course, my lab partner might disagree with me. Uh, and I might disagree with myself a week later. But that's OK. The 9.6 part is what I know for sure. And the seventh digit is uh, an estimate. And uh, I would say 9.67 is how long this particular measurement is. An important skill that you'll have to do is to be able to identify how much precision is implied in a number that's given to you. To do that, there are several different rules for significant digits, um, which you can see off to the side. And uh, let's look at four different values that we've been given and try to determine how many significant digits each of these measurements has. The first measurement here of 13.750 seconds has five significant digits. The first four are significant because any non-zero number is always a significant digit. But this zero is significant. 
the rule is because it's a final zero listed after the decimal place. But the reason I call it significant is that this zero didn't have to be written there. Somebody put it there on purpose. Uh, they could have said 13.75, but they put 0 0.750. That means that this zero is what we call a significant or a measured digit. So we would say that this has five significant digits. This value, 130 meters, the one and the three, of course, are significant. But this zero is not actually what we would call a significant or a measured digit. It is a placeholder. Uh, it only had to be there to make it 130 instead of 13 meters. So it is certainly an important number. Um, if that zero wasn't there, it's a totally different value. But it is not what we call measured. It's not significant. So this particular number has only two significant digits. Here, the three and the two and the one, those are all, of course, significant digits. This zero seems kind of out of place. It doesn't have to be there. It was written there to imply that we have measured it that precisely. That is another significant digit. These zeros, on the other hand, are only placeholders. They don't have to be there. Uh, they're really only there because we chose to express our answer in kilograms. If we had chosen to write this in milligrams, we could have written it like this, 3.210 milligrams, and that would mean the same thing and note that we don't have those zeros there anymore. So this indicates that the, the 3 and the 2 and the 1 and the final zero are significant, so we have four significant digits. The last value here, um, if you've taken chemistry, you might recognize it. This is Avogadro's number. This is written in scientific notation. Scientific notation is the easiest way to indicate how precise we know a number, because anything that's written here is a significant or a measured number. So this, the 10 to the 23rd, is only how big the number is. Yes, it's important, but it's not a significant. It's not something we've measured. So this has only four significant digits. Now, when you're adding numbers with significant digits, you need to keep in mind uh, a few rules. For adding and subtracting, the answer that you get can only be as precise as the least precise measurement that you're using. So to determine how many decimal places to round to, for instance, uh, add the two numbers up, combine them up just like you normally would, and uh, 3.172. And I like to put a little dotted line at the end of this 5.4 and at, after the tenth column because that's my least precise measurement, that's the vaguest measurement that I have. So when I add these together, I get 8.572. Now when I record my final answer, I need to round it to the nearest tenth because 5.4 meters was given to me uh, in the nearest tenth. That's my least precise measurement. So the nearest tenth of this is 8.6 meters. That can bring up some pretty interesting problems. Suppose I measured out 5,400 meters and then uh, I decide to take away uh, 1.325 meters from that. If I wrote that out, 5400 minus 1.325, and uh, add a few zeros here, and I have to carry, and all this sort of thing, you get 5398.5. And uh, I need to round this number to the nearest hundredth because I only have enough precision uh, to know this to the nearest hundredth place. And so when I round 5398.675 to the nearest hundred, I get 5400. And 5400 meters is the exact same number I started with. In this particular problem, we would say that compared to 5,400 meters, 1.325 meters is insignificant. 
And so it doesn't really change the value that much. We can neglect it. We can not worry about it. When you're multiplying or dividing numbers, uh, the rule is a little bit different. Your answer needs to have as many significant digits as the least number of significant digits that you are given. So if I were to multiply the distance 4.32 meters with the distance 0.0012 meters, I would get an area. And uh, this particular number has three significant digits. And this particular number has two significant digits. So my answer can only have two significant digits. To record your final answer, multiply the numbers as you normally would. That would give you 0 0.005184 meters squared. So I need to round this particular number so that it has only two significant digits. So we'll cut it off there. And we will say that uh, the answer is 0 0.0052 square meters. For division, uh, we do the exact same thing. This number has only one significant digit. These are really only placeholders, remember. And this number has three significant digits. So when I re for my final answer, I'm only allowed to have one significant digit, 900 divided by 23.6. Do that as you normally would. You get this answer. And a lot of people just write that whole thing, which is ridiculous. Uh, you do not know this answer to the nearest billionth place or whatever uh, this 2 ends up being. Uh, we know this answer really only to the nearest 10 meters per second. So we would round this to one significant digit, 40 meters per second squared.